Hello world, Shelly here, and today I want to talk about a complexion technique called underpainting that has been popping up again on TikTok and around social media. This is a technique that it's not new, but it pops up every couple of years. Different names, different variations. Currently we're going with underpainting. So what is it? Essentially, it's the technique of putting your blush, bronzer, and highlight under your foundation. So this works best with sheer to light coverage types of foundation because if you get into that medium to full coverage, you're gonna cover up everything that you put underneath it. It also works really well for dewy complexion sorts of looks, so let's try it out. So what do you need to accomplish underpainting? Well, it works best, at least in my perspective, when you are using cream products, liquid products, as opposed to powder products under your foundation. So a collection of those, some of my favorites, my Salt New York palettes. I've got the Sneaky Balm and I've got their bronzer and their bronzer, what did I just say? Their bronzer and their blush palettes. They work really well. I also enjoy the e.l.f. putty bronzers and putty products. I think this is the bronzer I will use today. One of my favorite blushes for this technique is the Euphoria Color Changing Blush Oil because it just gives a very beautiful, dewy kind of a look. For your foundation, you're gonna want something BB Cream, CC Cream, Sheer to Light Coverage. The Iconic London works great with this. Westman Atelier works great with this. The Revlon Illuminance works great with this. Basically anything that's light coverage. I also like to use a more dewy concealer for my under eyes. My favorite for this technique is by Terry. It's the Terribly Denzelous Concealer. I know, spendy, spendy, spendy alert, but it's so nice. The Charlotte Tilbury Flawless Filter is beautiful for this, or the e.l.f. equivalent. Why is the name escaping me? And I don't see my bottle of my e.l.f. on this disaster of a vanity that I've got going on right here. So really any of these types of products are good. I'm also going to recommend, and this is just my personal preference, but you may prefer brushes to apply these things. And when we say brushes, I'm you, I mean foundation brushes basically, or like dense angled brushes. So like this is my BK Beauty 101 foundation brush that I will use for the foundation part. This is just a random brush. I don't even know where I got it. Firma 103, it's just an angled brush that has some density to it. I like that for the blush. I usually do the bronzer either with a brush or fingertips. I had gotten my bronzer brush out and where did I put, oh, I put it back, okay. The, <laughs> I really like, is this, now where is the one that, here it is. I was gonna use my Angie Hot Flash, BK Beauty 107, I like for bronzer because it's got the, sort of the narrower shape to it. So grab your favorite brushes. Now what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna do this technique first with the Salt New York Sneaky Balm, which is super, super, super light coverage. Like it's sheer basically. And then I'm gonna touch up those parts of my face with, I haven't decided which one yet, something that is slightly more coverage, just to show you the difference. Most of the time, you're gonna to wanna to start with a primer of some sort. And I've been playing around with the e.l.f. Sun Touchable Woe Glow. I'm not gonna say I love it. It gives you that kind of glazed donut look, but because we're doing a whole glowy look with this thing, I'm gonna go with it. I have been pretty much only wearing it under medium coverage types of things because it's very glazed donut-like and I don't really want that full-on glazed donut. I have to remember I already did my eyes. Don't mess up my eyes. Don't mess them up. I usually do my face makeup first and then my eyes, but I went the other way around today. So this is really kind of confusing me. <laughs> this is not my normal order of operations. Do you see the glazed donut thing happening? Yeah, it's kind of a glazed donut thing. It also pills up under some of my foundations. So, you know, if you were looking at this one, 
Uh, it's chemical sunscreen. I can't remember. Did it have titanium dioxide in here as well? I vaguely recall it being... Here we go. Yeah, it's a chemical sunscreen, which I prefer chemical sunscreens under my makeup, but uh, yeah, it wears fine as long as it doesn't pill up when you're applying it, because if it pills up, it's going away, and that's a bummer. Uh, but eh, you know, I'm still on the fence. I don't, I don't know if I would recommend it. It's, it's, a, it's a very specific kind of look. <laughs> so if it's the look you're going for, then go for it. All right, so there's our base, and you can use any primer. It really does not matter. But since we're going glowy, I figured we might as well go glowy. Now I'm going to go bronzer, and I'm going to use the e.l.f. putty bronzer. And here is the shade that I like for my slightly cool toned... Do I want to just use fingertips? Let's just start with fingers. Problem is, I've grown my nails out a bit, and when they get long, it gets very hard to do anything with my makeup because I poke myself in the eye, and then I jab my nails into my products, and then it makes a hot mess. I haven't jabbed it yet. I'm doing okay. I'm doing okay so far. I'm going to start with fingertips, and then I will come in with a brush and blend some stuff out. I just want to lay down some... Lay down some quantity to start. Little bit more. This sunscreen is so shiny. <laughs> it's glowy, y'all. It is glowy. We got glow. If you wanted, if you wanted glazed donuts, if you're a fan of the Krispy Kreme look, we got it right here, right here. But we're going to cover up some of it anyway, so get some bronzer, shrink that massive forehead of mine. All right, now I'm going to dip in just a little bit. I might have dipped in too much. That's okay, though, because we're putting this on first, and it is going to have a bit less impact once we get the foundation over it. So we're just trying to give a little shape. Give a little bronzer, give a little shape. I do the whole bronze tour approach. I don't do a separate contour most of the time. I just use my bronzer to give me whatever shape I need. And you generally want to go with the spots that sun would hit your face. That's why we're doing like forehead and the bridge of the nose and a little, give yourself a little color. So that is our bronzer step. Then I like to do my blush. And so I'm going to use the Euphoria blush oil. Now you can go heavy, you can go light. This stuff is like just really the quantity you apply is going to determine how ham we're going. Oh, I got a little drip, a little drip. I'm gonna have a little too much there. Then, where did my, where, here it is. Oh my goodness. Don't wait too long with this stuff because it does start to dry down and then you're gonna get stuck. But I start with bringing it to the outer and then I bring it inward. And tap it out, then blend. And don't worry too much if you feel like you go too heavy because, again, we're still going to put foundation on over this. This technique, you know, why would you do it? Well, so that it looks like a little bit more seamless, like your product is not on top of the foundation. Or so that you have a little more control if you do have issues with going too heavy with your blush or your bronzer or your highlight and you want to have a little more control over that situation I'm just going to do a tiny bit more this blush is just gorgeous it's so pretty they have a variety of shades now I got this one this is the one that is like color changing to your pH of your skin I love it what do they call it I can't read it, and it's upside down, and I just, I need Sherlock. Help me, Sherlock. Chemical reaction. 
Dun, dun, dun. It's so pretty. Then for highlight, I'm going to go with my Hollywood Flawless Filter. Little Charlotte Tilbury action. But I actually really like this Salt New York as well. Now, this actually, you can apply it as more than just highlight. But I'm going to... I'm going to resist and I'm going to stay in highlight mode. Now you could get a separate brush if you want. I'm going to use my blush brush because I do kind of just want it all to blend together. And I do like to take the Charlotte Tilbury down over my cheek pores because it does just a beautiful job at blurring them. Like, it's not just a highlight. It's just a gorgeous perfecter kind of thing, but I sort of treat it as highlight. Let's take whatever's left above my brows. All right, so there's the structure of the complexion. Then you go in with your whatever foundation option you're going to use. Now, before I start, I am going to give myself a couple dabs of concealer under my eyes. Just a smidge, because we don't want to go ruining what we've already done. And I'm going to use my darker shade of the Sneaky Balm from Salt New York. And this is my... Where is my 101? I don't know where I put my BK 101. That's the one I want. The 101. Well, all right, no, I did. My, the 101's bigger. I'm gonna go a little smaller. What is this one? 106. All right. So I'm just gonna tap into my sneaky balm and start giving myself a little bit of coverage. Now, don't go over your blush, bronzer, highlight right away. Start with around your blush, bronzer, highlight. Might as well get this concealer going. You don't want to go in full, full on covering the blush, bronzer, highlight. In fact, in some cases, people kind of avoid it until the very end. So, you know, go in around it first in the areas that don't have any product. And you're really just kind of painting in, filling in those gaps, the, the gaps that where you didn't apply anything yet. And then you can kind of gently blend over the areas that do have product. And we're not going, we're not trying to hide it. You're just trying to kind of Blend everything together, you know? So it's a sheer wash over everything else. But just a little bit. And it just kind of brings everything together. It's so pretty. You could pop on some lip gloss and stop there and you're good to go. Like, that is the face. Now, does this save you time over a full face of makeup? I don't really think so because there's a lot of blending that goes into it. <laughs> I don't think it saves you time really, but I do think it's very, very pretty. So now if you want a little bit more coverage going on, oh, which one should I use today? The NARS Light Reflecting works well if you sheer it out. I think I'm gonna go Iconic London. And just a smidge, we're gonna go just a couple drops. Now this shade is a little dark for me. So actually what I normally do is I put a dab of this and I put a dab of my Westman Atelier <laughs> because the Westman's a smidge too light for me and this one's a smidge too dark for me and then I mix them together. 
Now I'm gonna leave them on this palette and I'm gonna pick them up off this palette with my brush dabbing because we don't want a ton of product anywhere. We just want a little bit, a sheer wash. You can see the tone of this is, it's a little bit, a little bit deeper and a little bit of coverage. Don't go over your blush bronzer until the end, until most of what you got going on has been removed from the brush. Then you go up and blend in. And it really does feel like painting. It is kind of a nice, quiet, therapeutic kind of an application process. Like, you just feel like you're, I don't know, petting yourself. <laughs> I enjoy it. Now you'll see some makeup artists and influencers and whatnot go back in and reinforce the blush bronzer highlight. I don't go too much into that. Like I might do a dab, a single dab. So I'm gonna dab, dab, make sure I got the bronzer. Dab, dab, just in the outer areas to make sure we don't lose the depth. But I don't, I don't do much with this going over because, you know, that was the whole point. If you were gonna do it on top, then you should have just done it on top to begin with. So I'm not big on that whole reinforcement layer of product. I will dip in, how did I lose my blush that quickly? I will dip in for like a little boop if I feel like I need to bring some color back, but try not to go too heavy on the foundation so that you don't have to go heavy on the additional reinforcement, shall we say. I love this blush. I love this blush so much. <laughs> Oh, look how glowy. Look how glowy. Now, uh, cat hair, cat hair. Ooh. So, once you're at this point, the recommendation is that you set with powder. Now, I don't like to use a lot of powder. I don't set anything really anymore, but this does work a little better if you lock in at least your T-zone. So I'm using the CoverGirl Simply Ageless Instant Wrinkle Blurring Pressed Powder. I have been enjoying this one. It is a translucent powder, and but I don't go heavy. I go boop, boop, outer to inner, perimeter, and then go just the rest of it everywhere. That's it, that's it. Not much. I'm actually itching my nose right now. <laughs> just a tiny, tiny, tiny bit. And that's essentially it. I'm gonna use my Euphoria. Oh, what do they call this one? Can't read these labels. These are made for young people. Soundstage. I like this as lip gloss. They're big on the multi-purpose products too. Mm, but this one's pretty. And I made a hot mess. There we go. <laughs> Euphoria is now at Ulta, which is very exciting to me. Bravo to them. And here is where we end up. Mess your hair up a little bit, and uh, there we go. What do you think? Are you going to try underpainting? Does this just seem like hype? Does it seem like, you know, what's the point to everything? You could do the same thing the other way around. I just think it's a fun way to... Kind of chill out, get your makeup on, but in a very soothing approach to it. Because you do feel a bit like an artist painting everything together. And it's a good everyday look. So there you have it. My take on 
underpainting. Let me know in the comments down below. Have you tried this? Do you plan to try it? What are your favorite products for underpainting? Let me know down below. And as always, thanks a lot for taking some time out of your day to geek out over makeup with me. You can also find me over on Patreon and get more behind the scenes access and chat with me. I also have my eyeshadow app roll a look over there if you would like to gain access to that. So check it out over at patreon.com slash geek out of water and Thanks a lot for taking some time out of your day to geek out over makeup with me. I appreciate your time and I hope you guys all have an awesome day or night wherever you are in the world. Take care of each other. Bye-bye.